All right, greetings. Let's go ahead and spend a little bit of time on chapter four, what is victimology? And this chapter focuses on the nature of victimization, the costs, the theories, and caring for victims. And they start off, the author starts off by talking about sources, official data, the Uniform Crime Reports, and also the uh, victimization uh, surveys, and where we get a lot of our, our data. And, of course, there's a lot of studies on victims, literally thousands of studies on victims, uh, those uh, that are, are victims of um, uh, specific types of crimes and, and the patterns and, and how those crimes occurred and also the uh, consequences or effects of those crimes and ideas about how to uh, decrease those crimes. Your author points out that males are more likely to be victimized in, in, in general, although the gender gap is getting smaller. Uh, females uh, in contrast, are increased risk of um, rape and sexual assault. We also see that um, uh, minority groups have higher victimization rates. Uh, those that are younger higher, also have higher victimization rates. And um, those in lower uh, income areas may experience, for example, more uh, crime, especially uh, property crime. And so there's a lot of uh, economic costs of victimization, uh, property loss, for example, the costs of uh, uh, medical and mental health care, the loss of productivity, and, and then, of course, um, uh, the uh, psychological uh, and social costs related to pain and suffering and loss of quality of life. And so what we find is that there's a lot of... Um, uh, money spent on, on criminal justice. If you think about all that we have in our huge criminal justice system, law enforcement, courts, corrections, programs, um, and those costs are not distributed equally in, um, in, in society. And, and so um, uh, we see some inequality there as well. On, uh, you, know, you can look at communities and you can look at uh, you know, police um, you know, uh, rates um, in, in different communities. Some communities have higher uh, have, uh, rates of, um, of um, uh, police than, than others. Uh, and we also can try to look at how that relates to the distribution of crime in a state or a community. And um, I mentioned, uh, again, that there's, um, you, you know, social and psychological costs of, of victimization uh, that are related to um, mental health and uh, also uh, the social stigmatization and other uh, uh, emotional responses to um, uh, crime. Uh, also, we see uh, avoidance behaviors and other uh, defensive or protective behaviors based on on, uh, on, on crime and, and, and perceptions of, of crime. Um, I get calls periodically at home and I pick up the phone and, and there's a recording that says, hey, you live in a high crime community. There's been a lot of crimes. Press this, press one now and to talk to a representative of getting a alarm system that will protect you. And I'm thinking, well, um, first of all, I don't live in a high crime, uh, you know, uh, area. So they got their, um, you know, data all wrong there. And secondly, there hasn't been a whole bunch of crimes in, in my community. So they got that wrong. And, and third, um, that, you know, that, um, maybe having an alarm system on my home is going to be helpful in a variety of ways. But once I leave my home, is that going to, uh, uh, do me much good? So, you know, we get into a lot of these debates is, is how much crime or actually in communities, uh, who's victimized, uh, what um, services are available uh, to, to victims, and, um, and how can we uh, assist. And there's some theories related to victimization, and I'll let you read through some of those, but one that's become uh, much more popular is routine activities theory, or a person's routine activities may increase their risk of victimization. Um, 
I'm looking for my one of my classic books, and um, and obviously I can't find it right now. I should have got that earlier. But crime prevention by environmental design uh, looks at how we actually design spaces in uh, in cities and communities uh, to decrease crime, and and there's some ideas about uh, that as well. And we'll take a closer look at at these in 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 the future. Also, there's some uh, interesting research on hot spots, which are areas that have uh, higher rates of crime and how we can address that. And the debate on whether or not if we go into a hot spot, does it uh, you know, dissipate into, um, uh, you know, and, and, and not be a problem anymore? Or does it uh, carry over into other uh, areas? Uh, so so, you know, you see that, you know, debate going on as well. Also, in the ways that. Um, structures are built and um, a discussion about that. Uh, certainly, I, I know, for example, I've had an interest in my own city on uh, the increased traffic that we've had. Um, some would say, oh, we haven't had increased traffic and, uh, and, you know, we have data to show that. And I looked at those reports and I had some um, concerns that perhaps the sampling occurred when there weren't really, really heavy uh, traffic. In other words, when do you take your measurements? At, at 9 o'clock, at 8 o'clock in the morning, at 10 o'clock? Do you do a 4 to 5, or do you do from 3 to 4, or do you mix it up? So I, I wanted to actually see uh, the patterns and the long-term patterns and trends. So, um, uh, you know, uh, but the perception I have is that there's a lot more traffic because I'm waiting in my car longer, it seems, uh, it takes a couple lights before I can go right, where before it used to be one, and and uh, and, and and there's a lot more cars. Uh, but I may be misperceiving things, and so really what I want to see is a whole bunch of data that really gives me a good idea about whether or not I just have that perception of a great deal um, of, of more traffic in, in my community, uh, or is it really happening? And so, you know, and I think they're doing some studies on that now so I can take a look at this. Uh, one thing I've had to um, learn over the years, and I don't think I've really succeeded in doing that, is, um, is presenting to the public and community and uh, politicians uh, about crime problems and things of, of that nature. Um, I, I have not really, uh, let me put it this way, uh, years ago when I was working and um, conducting research, working with perpetrators, working with victims, uh, doing all kinds of stuff related to violence in the community. I did a couple of um, uh, public appearances, seminars, television spots, and, and the like. And, and I'm talking about a long time ago. I was 21, I think, at the time. And and I went back to my office, and, and one of the administrators said, Mark, I don't think we're going to have you doing PR anymore. Public relations just doesn't seem to fit you well, or we're going to have to send you to public relations courses. Oh, you know, why would you send me to a public relations course? I don't know. Maybe they could help me. It's kind of like sending me to Miss Manners in my, in my head. It just isn't going to work, or I'm going to have to struggle with, with that. So, um... You know, I, I, I guess I'm a, I was a little rough around the edges. Um, I didn't say anything wrong. It's just that the way I said it or, or some things, they said you took it a little too far, for example, that what you said was accurate, what you said was based on the research, but the way that you said it um, wasn't the best way. And, you know, in other words, my statement maybe was a little bit too strong or... Uh, and so, but that happens a lot. That happens a lot, and there's a lot of debate about that. But that's why I think it's so, you know, useful to bring in the research, you know. And you can say, well, I'm just reporting on the research. The research shows this, this, and that. And then if people attack the research, you can refer them back to the articles or give them the actual article or the links or tell them to contact the researchers. But um, you know, to transmit that knowledge is real important. But but how we do that is also. And um, I'm still working on that in my, uh, you know, mid-50s here. I'm still trying to figure out how to, uh, you know, do PR. And I have gone to some seminars, and I have taken a few, uh, you know, uh, uh, classes. But, um, uh, it, 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 you know, that's real important in getting the message out and, 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 and really clarifying what's going on. Uh, so... Um, 
we have programs that are set up for victims, and victims do have um, many rights. And so we have actual legislation uh, protecting victims' rights. We have, um, for example, victims' compensation, victims' impact statements, victim and witness assistance, and a variety of, um, of services, also including victim offender mediation, which would be face-to-face -face meetings where uh, the offender apologizes to the victim and they try to, uh, you know, sort things out and uh, understand uh, uh, what happened a little bit better, with the offender taking responsibility for his or her uh, behavior. So, so um, you know, I think we're at a point now where we're trying to find uh, uh, ways that, um, you know, decrease crimes, of course, and but also, you know, how we can best care for victims and 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 um, uh, help them deal with their, whatever you know situations are are occurring. I, I can tell you, years ago, I helped um, some clients who had been uh, victimized with victim compensation, and some of that was actually to get the money to take a bus to group therapy. So, so I mean, there are a lot of things that we have to uh, uh, assess here. That they had the therapy program set up, and and they were, you know, that my client, for example, uh, could attend that group therapy, that weekly group therapy, free of charge for as long as as uh, she wanted to. But she also had financial issues, and she couldn't afford to take. Um, uh, you, you know, a taxi. She didn't have a car. She didn't have a friend who could drive her. The bus really uh, was the only way, but it was a, a mile and a half to get to the bus stop and so on. So I had to find ways to, you know, in other words, I'm saying that when we start analyzing all of this, we have to think about as many of, of the um, uh, situations surrounding uh, what we're trying to do, that if we set up a victim's um, treatment program, that is not accessible to the victims, that's a big problem. And, and also we want to see if what we're doing actually helps by uh, conducting program evaluation. And so that's important as well uh, as, as we'll see later on. So this just kind of gives you a brief overview of, um, of uh, victimology. And we'll be getting into that more as we um, proceed with um, uh, future chapters. And this wraps up this video.